This is Moments of Truth with Andrew Marks, co-founder of Success Hacker. Today, I am joined by Raman Bindra, Regional Head of Customer Success at Lead Squared. Raman, tell us a bit about your company and your role. Hi, Andrew. Uh, glad to be here in this conversation with you. So just to give you an overview about Lead Squared, uh, it's a sales and marketing automation platform that helps uh, companies to automate their sales activities and be more productive. The organization is headquartered in Bangalore, India. And yeah, it's a growing startup that's helping a lot of SMEs, mid-sector mid, mid organizations, as well as your enterprise customers to help in their sales activities. And me, as their uh, regional head customer success manager, is definitely making sure that the onboarding, the engagement, and the adoption of the product is really going good in my specific region, that is north uh, for Lead Squared. Great, thank you. You claim that effective customer engagement is a critical part of the customer success process, which allows you to achieve this concept of customer delight. Tell us, tell us a bit more about your perspective and and maybe some best best practices uh, to follow. Definitely. Uh, so the point here is that customer uh, engagement is very, very important because it is actually the root of building a relationship uh, with your own customer and then strengthening it to a point wherein the trust factor is built and the customer is loyal to your organization. And then comes the picture of customer delight. Now, uh, I will definitely you know, talk about some best practices here that are really helpful in terms of you know, having more advanced or good customer engagement uh, for your organization. The very first thing is that you have to be proactive with your customer, but you have to be proactive in the right manner with your customer. When I say proactive in the right manner, you have to make sure that you are not overwhelming your customer with a lot of information. Now, whenever a customer is assigned to you or your team, there is a lot of excitement uh, in terms of you know sharing a lot of information in one go and making sure that the customer knows everything, you communicate a lot of information through email, through phone, through messaging. But we have to make sure, take a step back and understand, does that information at that very point of time is actually needed or not? That makes my you know makes me come to my point that you have when I say you have to be proactive in the right manner, you share the information with your customer that is actually needed at that point of time so that the customer really pays attention to what you're sharing with him. This is the first and the most important thing for me when I talk about engagement with my customers. So share the right info at the right time. That's the point, yes. Okay, what else? Then we talk about, you know, uh, when the customer needs you, you have to be present for him. But you have to act as a guide for your customer and make sure that you educate them at every step and process. You should not be available or you know you should not have that kind of an approach wherein the customer calls you and says, hey, you know what, I'm facing an issue. Can you help me with that? It's kind of you know, reactive. You have to make sure that whenever they are uh, you know, trained on a product and when they start using it, you are there to help them. You are there to guide them with the right way to use it with the right approach and make sure that they are doing it in a manner that is helping them move correctly or perfectly towards their desired outcome. This is the second one, that you have to act as a guide, but not just as a person who is solving their issues. Right, and, and as any good guide, let's just call, let's say people use the term Sherpa, as any, as any mm -hmm. good, you know, Sherpa, would, would would tell you, well, you got to tell me where you want to go in order for me to take you there, right? You don't just say, okay, here, teach me how to walk, teach me how to climb, right? It's, okay, well, where do you need to go? Um, so, and once again, I couldn't agree with you more. It's not, it's not about teaching them how to use the product. It's about teaching them how to achieve what they're trying to achieve with the product that or the service that they've purchased from you. And that requires you to connect the dots between uh, what they need to achieve and what you can provide for them. Definitely. I agree with that. Uh, also, you know, I would like to highlight here is uh, while you are paving that way uh, towards moving to that desired outcome, you also have to be very, very sure about the people with whom you will be communicating in this journey. So you have to make sure that the right people in your organization are mapped 
to the right stakeholders in the customer's organization, which means that with your stock, you would be talking about, say, product, you would be talking about good approach or best practices. But if a finance person reaches your stock with a financial problem, say, billing, that would actually create a rift that, hey, uh, you know, it was totally uncalled for. I'm not even, con you know, uh, dealing in this particular, you know, department or area. So you have to map the right people uh, in your organization so that the communication flow reaches to the right people and, uh, you know, the decisions can be taken in a timely manner. So that is also a pretty important thing that definitely you are acting as a spot, but if there are multiple departments revolving around you who are actually taking care of communicating or will be communicating with the customer, you have to make sure they are mapped to the right people in the customer's organization as well. So resource mapping from your team to their team. Yes, that's okay. really important. Okay. And what also, uh, the other part here would be never ever overcommit and under deliver. You know, it's a uh, pretty old saying, but it's very, very important and valuable in today's time. With customers, you know, when they come up with requests, we always tend to say that, you know what, this can be done or, uh, you know, we can really work on it. But inside, you have to be sure what actually can be delivered and what actually can be gained from your product and service. That's the point. And that's very, very uh, essential uh, to make sure that your relationship or the uh, strength or, or the trust that you're trying to build with your customer doesn't really jeopardize. So you have to make sure that the thin line is always created in terms of when you communicate of what can be done, what cannot be done, and when some things would be delivered. That's really important. So that's my other point. So always focus on rather, you know, committing less, under committing, and over deliver. Because that surpasses the expectation of the customer. And that would also make sure that customer is not satisfied, but customer is delighted. That's the key difference. Yeah, that don't don't tell don't different. tell the customer what you think that they want to hear. Tell them the reality. And yes, expectation management is key. I, I we teach about this as well, right? If if you think it's going to take uh, four days to do something, you tell the customer it's going to take five days, and you get it done in four days, you're a hero. You get it done in five days, you've met expectations. You're still a hero, right? Give yourself some some buffer. Give yourself some some leeway. Um, and to your point, um. Uh, under commit and over deliver. Okay, got it. Yeah. And uh, the one that I, you know, personally uh, practice a lot is while you are practicing engagement with your customer and trying to build it really well, you have to empathize. That's very, very important that you have to empathize with your customers. You have to, uh, you know, make sure that you're actively listening to what your customer is saying and then accordingly responding to the customer. Never ever, you know, listen to respond to the customer, but listen to understand firstly, and then react. That's the whole, that you have to take step back. Whenever customer might be, you know, say, uh, I would say that the customer might be irritated sometimes with the solution that you have provided. It's not really yielding them results. And he might blast at you at some point that, hey, you know what? This is not really working for me. You cannot react at that point. You have to take a step back, understand where is he coming from? Understand that he's also answerable to his management. Understand that he has also invested money in your organization. What is the best that you can do to really give him solution, but not a root answer? That is, that is really very important. Be empathetic and be a very active listener to what customer really wants and how you can deliver and act on that. Yeah, em empathy plays a huge role in effective communications, right? You, like you said, you want to listen to understand. You want to... Uh, paraphrase, you want to repeat back what you're hearing from the customer. And and the other thing that you need to think about is, and, and this part of the empathetic piece is that um, you, you, uh, your solution uh, is likely part of a bigger thing that this individual is dealing with, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so their, their emotional reaction to you being frustrated or something about, an element of the product is not a personal attack. And there's a lot of other things layered on top of that uh, that are, are, are uh, playing a role in the way that they're responding to you. Definitely. You know, it plays a very important role. So you have to really keep yourself in the shoes of the customer. 
and understand the situation and accordingly react. Yeah, everything, that, and, and that goes for anything, everything, whether you're in customer success, you're in customer support, you're an implementation consultant, even when you're in the, in the pre-sales process, anybody in a customer-facing role uh, needs to have um, the, the ability to empathize and needs to have the ability to, to uh, uh, practice active listening, really hear uh, what's being said, what's happening, what's going on. So, um, yeah, with you. Anything else? On your yeah, list are some uh, great practices, great best practices. Yes. Um, uh, one other thing would be, you know, and uh, this is also very important, and I have uh, observed this uh, in the recent scenario. If the customer is not responding, you know, you should not never run back and, you know, bombard the customer with a lot of emails, messages, and create your own notions that, you know what, the customer is going to go, the customer is going to churn. That might not be the point. Understand the scenario, understand the circumstances, and then, uh, you know, take decisions. Never, ever, you know, make assumptions and then, uh, you know, uh, work with the customer in terms of communicating or, you know, uh, flooding them with a lot of emails and asking that, hey, are you okay? Are you good? That's actually irritating the customer. There are a lot of things going on with the customer as well. You need to understand that. So that's another very key point that we have to make sure that we actually practice and preach while we are in success and having a good engagement with the customer. Trust your customer, actually. hundred percent agree, especially right now with what's going on yes. with the coronavirus. There's a lot of reasons why people aren't responding. Uh, and it's not because they have, you know, it's, it, we talk about how people working from home, they have more time on their hands, yet they're, they're juggling and they're juggling with their kids and their families and all the stuff that's going on. There's a lot of things. It's not just time-based. There's a lot of things on people's minds. There's a lot right. of uncertainty. And you are, whether you think so or not, you're a small piece of the puzzle for them. There's all this other stuff they're dealing with. So a That's lack true. of That's response true. doesn't mean, you know, that the end of your relationship, it means that they got a lot more important things to be focused on right now. So uh, I, I get that. Don't get yourself, the, the net net of that is don't get yourself wrapped around the axle. Yeah you know, being concerned about a lack of response. You need to take that within the context of what's happening um, right. you know, in the environment the, that they're dealing with. And, and, and right now it's an environment that we're all shared collectively as a global, um, as a, as a, 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 a you know, a, a global community are all dealing with. So. Yeah. Good. Uh, That's great. And the last, and the, and, and, and the last point here, you know, yeah. the last point here would be, uh, it's pretty small, but celebrate the small wins with your customer. That actually, you know, builds that uh, good relationship with your customer. That they also know that you care. So yeah. if your customer achieves something, if your customer has done something really good in their own career, through social media or through LinkedIn, yep. you know, uh, give them a say thank you or say congratulations. These are pretty small things, but have a very big impact on the mind of the customer that they know you really care. You really follow them and you, you understand them understand them really well. This really matters a lot. So that's the reason. Celebrate small ones with your customers. Yeah, celebrate small ones for sure. Great. Very insightful. Uh, I appreciate uh, you spending some time with me today. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Andrew.